welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today I want to talk to you about how I make songs that were tracked using amp simulators, either plug-in amp sims or hardware amp sims, such as the Line 6 Helix, the Kemper, the Strymon Iridium, etc. I'm doing this because last week I uploaded a video where I tracked a song using the Boss ME50 into a Strymon Iridium for guitars, and I used the Boss ME50 also on bass and vocals. But uh, today we're just concentrating on the guitars because treating uh, amp sim like you would treat a real guitar amp with a real microphone is not going to necessarily work the same. So there are certain things like that I, I just can't do without getting artifacts like boosting, you know, say 4 dB at 3K and above. You know, I think that when you do that with an amp simulator, you're just gonna introduce all sorts of digital garbage. And on the flip side of that too, when you take away too much of the low end with a filter, say up to 100 to 200 uh, hertz, um, you're left with some of that garbage that's being kind of masked by the low end stuff that's in an amp simulator. So, and, uh, and on top of that, you're also left with a weaker guitar sound. So when you do it with a guitar amp that's mic'd, you can usually take out some low end and still have a nice bit of punch there because you have the speaker uh, pushing air and all that fun stuff. You can also boost a little bit more without hearing a lot of yuckiness because you just have a smoother sound coming out of a speaker into a microphone than you do with a digital recreation. The digital recreation is kind of mimicking a finished sound already, so you're already kind of... Um, have your hands tied a little bit. So you really want to get the sound at the source always anyway, but you really, with uh, amp sims, you really try to get it right then and there, and you don't really want to touch it too much afterwards. So that's kind of what this is about. So I'm gonna play a part of the song, rough mix, and then the final mix, and then, um, and this is all the clean sounds that I had going on. And then I'm gonna go to the end of the song where there's fuzz and distortion in the guitars and A, B, that as well. So you're gonna hear a difference in the bass and the drums and all that stuff um, in this comparison. But then I'm gonna move on and we're gonna, uh, and I'm gonna show you what I did for the guitars and all that stuff. All right, so if you're into that, stick around. Here we go, rough mix first, and that is the purple, and the final mix is yellow. All right, so now we're gonna do the uh, fuzz and distortion guitars at the end. All right, so the first guitars we're gonna listen to in solo are the Big Muff and the Rat. And I will tell you right now that it's subtractive EQing. I didn't boost anything. So the left guitar is the Big Muff and I have cut 4 dB at 230. And then on the Rat, I cut 2 dB at 240, but I also did a high pass at 100 and something hurts. Not a whole lot, but I wanted the guitars to have edge and I wanted the bass and the you know kick drum and all that stuff to punch through as well. So by just cutting this stuff and then turning the volume up to kind of get where I wanted it to be, I could get that edge to the guitar in the context of the mix without boosting the actual frequencies that I was 
wanting to get. So we are going to play this back and forth. I'm going to uh, bypass these channel strips and then I'll put them on. If that was subtle to you, that's okay. Cutting out the low mid is gonna let the bass and the kick and snare have a place in the mix. And I'm not gonna be missing that as much. And I can keep the 800 and above part of the guitar intact where it really counts to me, especially for this track. Now we're gonna to listen to these guitars in the context of the mix. I don't have the vocals on just so you can really hear it. Um, so listen to the bass and the, and the kick and snare and um, see if you can tell if they're coming through better when I engage the EQ. So I feel like even though I'm not boosting anything in there, they do sound a little bit edgier to me um, with that low mid being cut out. So very happy with that. Um, like I said, I did try to boost those things at first and it was just too much. It really clashed with vocals and cymbals and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm gonna show you what I did on this clean channel, the rhythm. I'm not gonna do the lead because the video would be too long but I'm just gonna talk about this clean channel and then I'm gonna move on to what I did on my buses. For this, I did boost a little bit cause like I said, I feel like you can get away with it on the clean guitars. And I did filter out 14 and above, I filtered out and then uh, 40 and below. Then I did boost 1.5 dB of four and seven dB of 7.5 kilohertz and then I did cut a little bit here of the 200 range at 4 dB and that's it for that um, but I you know like I said the boosting was minimal and you'll see why later but <laughs> Again, really subtle, but in the mix, it was able to still have a little bit of sparkle, let the bass come through on those parts, and just kind of do its dreamy little thing. I really liked how it sounded without any EQ because it had a nice cloudy thing happening, especially with the panning delay going on and a flanger, but um, you got to cut something if you want it to fit. I'm gonna take just the drums and the bass and the clean guitar for, for now so you can hear it. I'm gonna take this uh, EQ in and out while we do it. So that's that and you know again it's subtle but it's just giving a little bit more room for the bass to be there the bass isn't really that busy but before i did any of that kind of cutting and before i treated the bass 
Um, it has chorus on it. You couldn't even really hear all that. It was just kind of mushy. Everything was mushy in the rough mix. So now I'm going to talk about the buses that I did. And this is kind of like a parallel compression widener bus. Um, not sure if other people do that. I don't know if I got this from somewhere. I can't really <laughs> remember. But I've been doing stuff like this for a while um, where I'll compress and then use some kind of widener and because I'm using it underneath everything it's not as destructive to everything because I really don't like wideners on anything like that's in your face because they just cause too many issues for me but I was using it because I wanted the guitars to sound a little bit wider but I also wanted to get a little bit more presence out of them and I feel like that's what wideners can do um, they do like some psychoacoustic kind of stuff where there's some upper mid-range push. That's why I'm using that and I figured I could get the brighter sound without um, the artifacts of just EQing an individual channel. So I'm going to play the guitars with and without this parallel compression widener channel. So I'm going to show you that same bus in and out on this clean part of the song so you can hear what that sounds like as well without it first and then I'll bring it in and out. Hopefully you can hear that there's more presence to things. There's kind of the stereo field sounds a little bit more expansive and deeper and wider at the same time um, and all on a parallel chain. So it makes it so it's not so destructive to the overall sound, you know. So that's, you know, why we use parallel compression and stuff like that. So now to the guitar's final output, which is the routing folder. So the guitar bus and the parallel widener bus are both being fed to this final folder routing bus basically and i have a channel strip from ssl on here and a fatso junior before i get to the eq i will tell you what i do with the fatso for a lot of the buses that i do in rock songs guitar oriented songs anything that you know needs more punch and more girth or whatever i use the transformer uh, circuit of this uh, fatso and then I use this warmth circuit as well and depending on what the instrument is will determine where I set this warmth so on bass I usually turn it up a little bit more because I usually crank 1000 1.5 for the picking if it's a bass player that uses a pick and that way I can still get that articulation but the fatso will knock down any kind of pointy nastiness and then the transformer circuit will add a lot of harmonics and a lot of low mid um, and a more girth to everything and it also helps things be punchy it'll also help things stand out on smaller speakers that don't have subwoofers or anything like that are more mid-range um, centric if you will and it'll help things stand out in that way so it gives it a little bit more then also um, on the EQ I am cutting out everything above 9 kilohertz and then I am uh, cutting everything out below 75 hertz and then a little boost 1 dB of 7.5 and a really small cut around 200 again and that's it for the overall shaping of the guitars here so everything i've done is pretty pretty subtle you know and that's the point of this whole video all right so i'm going to play the same part and i'm going to take the fatso in and out so you can hear it it's on right now so i'm going to actually i'm going to take it off real quick and i'm going to start without it and then bring it in
So you can hear it's uh, giving a lot more body to these clean guitars and it's just warming it all up, if you will. But you know, we know when, when we say warming, it's usually the low mid area and softening of the high end. So I guess I can take this EQ on and off here real quick. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Subtractive EQing is your friend when it comes to these amp simulators. Also using parallel buses. So you could do it for parallel compression. You could do it for just the widener. You can combine them both together like I did, blend it in. So you get a little edge, a little width, and also a little girth from the compression. And then your final uh, bus for all of that is where you can do some broad EQ strokes or some filtering and just get everything to sit where you want it without boosting the high mids in your guitars. And that way you'll still have that clear sound and you know, basically the fundamental of the guitar sound there without it adding artifacts or anything like that. So if you got anything out of this video, hit the like so other people can see it. If you're into this kind of content, subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload another video. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.